Think you know Maggie Smith, the grand dame of British acting? Well, think again, because there's a whole lot more to her story than the glitz of award ceremonies and the elegance of Downton Abbey. Sure, Dame Maggie's got talent and grace, but behind those sharp one-liners and regal presence, there are secrets and stories that haven't hit the headlines yet. We're talking about the real deal, challenges she's faced, moments of doubt, and the tough skin she's had to develop in a career that's lasted longer than most. This isn't just another tribute, it's a deep dive into what makes Maggie Smith truly remarkable, beyond the roles we think we know her for. So let's peel back the curtain on the legend herself, before the stardom and fame. Margaret Natalie Smith, born on December 28, 1934 in Ilford, Essex, was the daughter of Margaret Hutton and Nathaniel Smith. Her parents were both hard workers and did what they could to provide for their children. Smith's mother, hailing from Glasgow, Scotland, worked as a secretary, while her father, originally from Newcastle upon Tyne, was a renowned public health pathologist affiliated with the University of Oxford. Together, they trained and taught their children all they needed to know to be able to survive in life, but most especially how to follow, pursue their passions, and contribute to society and the community around them. As she grew older, her parents shared everything with her and her siblings, including the romantic story of how they met on a train journey from Glasgow to London, passing through Newcastle. Unknown to them, this was building in Little Smith a love and passion for stories and entertainment, unlike the world had ever seen, and it left a mark on the young girl at the time. Eventually, at the tender age of four, the Smith family had to relocate. And so alongside her twin older brothers, Alistair and Ian, they moved to Oxford. For Smith, that was the beginning of great things, as little by little, her life began to take a drastic turn. Growing up in Oxford, Smith attended Oxford High School until the age of 16. It was around this time that her passion and enthusiasm for drama and arts completely engulfed her life, and all she wanted to do was to commit herself to acting. However, when she told her parents about it, they were not sold on the idea and needed their daughter to make something of her life first before she ventured into such a highly competitive and uncertain industry. Thankfully, as a result of Smith's relentlessness and determination, she was allowed to pursue her interest. And just like that, she embarked on a path that would shape her future profoundly. She enrolled in courses at the prestigious Oxford Playhouse, and there she began her journey unto the screens we know her from today. The Path to Stardom In 1952, at the tender age of 17, Margaret Natalie Smith embarked on her theatrical journey on the wings of the Oxford University Dramatic Society, assuming the role of Viola in Shakespeare's beloved comedy Twelfth Night at the esteemed Oxford Playhouse. To most, it was just a play like any other. But for Smith, this role marked the inception of what would blossom into an illustrious career in the performing arts. When she got on stage, she lit the entire theater with her commanding presence and amazing acting skills that reverberated through the entire building. It didn't take a genius to realize that she was born to act, and so, as was to be expected, Smith was rewarded with new roles in new plays. Her early years on stage were characterized by a diverse array of roles, showcasing her versatility and talent. Smith graced productions at the Oxford Playhouse with her presence, enchanting audiences with performances in notable works such as Cinderella in 1952, Rookery Nook a year later, Cakes and Ale in the same year, and The Government Inspector in 1954. But that was not all. Her rich and entertaining talents also catapulted her into television with appearances in programs like Oxford Accents in 1954, demonstrating her burgeoning presence in the entertainment industry. But yet another big leap in Smith's life and career occurred in 1956 when she dived into the Atlantic to make her Broadway debut in New Face of 56 at the prestigious Ethel Barrymore Theater. As always, Smith performed her all. And also, as always, she captivated audiences and solidified her reputation as a formidable talent on both sides of the Atlantic. To anyone else, all of these would have been overwhelming and caused her to relax and drink in her newfound glory and fame. 
but Smith was never one to rest on her laurels, so she pressed on and continued to push boundaries in her industry. Almost like she was trying to prove a point, she starred alongside Kenneth Williams in the wonderful musical comedy Share My Lettuce in 1957. As a result, she was instantly seen as a versatile actress, thus adding a feather to her hat. Then, in 1962, Smith truly began to etch her name into the annals of theatrical history. Her portrayal in Peter Schaffer's The Private Ear and The Public Eye earned her the first of an unprecedented six Best Actress Evening Standard Awards. This remarkable achievement underscored her prowess and cemented her status as a leading figure in the dramatic arts. Recognition from peers and luminaries soon followed, with none other than Laurence Olivier himself recognizing Smith's extraordinary talent. Invited to join Olivier's newly formed National Theatre Company, Smith became an integral part of the prestigious ensemble, gracing the stages of the Old Vic with her remarkable presence. During her tenure at the Royal National Theatre in the 1960s, Smith's formidable talent and dedication to her craft garnered both admiration and a hint of rivalry. Renowned British theatre critic Michael Coveney eloquently noted the dynamic between Smith and Olivier, describing it as a professional rivalry tinged with mutual respect. Olivier, recognizing Smith's exceptional abilities, saw in her a worthy competitor, a sentiment echoed by Coveney, who remarked on Smith's unparalleled quickness on stage. Smith and the Harry Potter franchise. From 2001 to 2011, Margaret Natalie Smith found herself propelled to new heights of international fame and acclaim through her portrayal of the esteemed professor Minerva McGonagall in the beloved Harry Potter film series. Her embodiment of the wise and formidable Hogwarts professor captivated audiences worldwide, solidifying her status as an iconic figure in the realm of cinema. Smith's involvement in the Harry Potter franchise not only showcased her remarkable talent, but also marked a reunion with fellow actor Daniel Radcliffe, with whom she had shared the screen in David Copperfield in 1999. Across seven of the eight films, Smith's portrayal of Professor McGonagall resonated deeply with audiences, contributing to the series' immense success. Renowned for its stellar cast, the Harry Potter films boasted an ensemble of legendary British actors, further enhancing the cinematic experience. From the late Richard Harris and the incomparable Michael Gambon to the unforgettable Alan Rickman, alongside stalwarts such as Robbie Coltrane, Emma Thompson, Ralph Fiennes, Helena Bonham Carter, and Julie Walters. The series was a showcase of British acting talent at its finest. The immense commercial success of the Harry Potter films is a testament to their universal appeal. With a staggering $7.7 .7 billion in worldwide box office receipts, solidifying their place as one of the most lucrative film franchises in history. In 2016, during promotional activities for The Lady in the Van, Smith reflected on her experiences working on the Harry Potter films and her interactions with the late Alan Rickman. Fondly remembering Rickman's talent and their shared moments on set, Smith remarked, he Rickman was such a terrific actor and that was such a terrific character that he played and it was a joy to be with him. She reminisced about the camaraderie between them, highlighting moments of laughter and camaraderie, particularly during the filming of reaction shots. Their shared experiences forged a bond of friendship and mutual respect, making their time on set truly memorable. But as famous and widespread as her name was, Smith had her own personal struggles in her life that she tried to hide from the world. Smith's parents doubted she had an actress's face. One of the most painful and perhaps dirtiest secrets that Smith has tried to keep to herself for the most part of her life was the fact that her parents never supported her dream to become an actress, even at such a young age. Maggie Smith's upbringing and early life offer intriguing insights into the origins of her illustrious career, marked by her unexpected journey into the world of theater. Her father, a University of Oxford lab technician, and her mother, a secretary from Glasgow, Scotland, were not regular theatergoers, making Smith's eventual passion for acting all the more surprising, even to herself.
In a candid reflection shared with the Evening Standard in 2019, Smith expressed her bewilderment at the sudden emergence of her artistic ambitions, stating, Honest to God, I have no idea where the urge came from. It was such a ghastly time, and we didn't go to the theater. I got into terrible trouble once because the neighbors took me to the cinema on a Sunday. Despite her innate talent and burgeoning passion for acting, Smith encountered skepticism from her mother, who envisioned a more conventional career path for her daughter. Doubting her daughter's prospects in the world of acting, Smith's mother once remarked on her daughter's chances of success, quipping, with a face like that. In essence, she didn't believe her daughter was beautiful enough to act or had what it took to be the face of cinema in any capacity. As can be imagined, this affected Smith negatively in a lot of ways growing up, as she doubted herself for a long time too, but had to push boundaries regardless. She has no plans to retire from acting, Maggie Smith's enduring dedication to her craft and her willingness to embrace new challenges are exemplified in her reflections on her career trajectory, particularly her evolving relationship with theater and her commitment to the screen. In a revealing interview on 60 Minutes in 2013, Smith candidly shared her sentiments about her theater days, expressing a sense of closure while maintaining an open-ended outlook on her future in film and television. Despite feeling that her time on the stage might be drawing to a close, she made it clear that retirement from the screen was not on the horizon. With characteristic wit, Smith remarked, I'll keep going with Violet from Downton Abbey and any other old biddy that comes along, demonstrating her willingness to embrace diverse roles and continue contributing to the cinematic landscape. However, fate had other plans for Smith's theatrical career. Contrary to her expectations, she made a triumphant return to the stage after a 12-year hiatus, showcasing her versatility and gravitas in the role of Brunhilde Palmsel, secretary to Josef Goebbels, Hitler's propaganda minister, in the 2019 production of A German Life at London's Bridge Theatre. This unexpected turn of events not only reaffirmed Smith's enduring passion for the performing arts, but also highlighted her willingness to challenge herself with complex and thought-provoking roles, even at this stage in her illustrious career. However, despite the fact that she makes it look like she is so in love with acting and has an undying passion for the entertainment industry, as a result of occurrences in her life, like her first divorce and the demise of her second husband, rumors swirl that Smith is a lonely person, and acting is the only thing that is keeping her afloat. These rumors suggest that she clings to her career because without it, she would have no other real purpose or reason to live. Although she had grandchildren, sources say she is not as close to them as she'd have liked, and if she retires, she'd basically be alone for the rest of her life. Whether these rumors are true or not is yet to be known. A theater enthusiast but hates Shakespeare. Maggie Smith's remarkable journey through the world of Shakespearean theater is a testament to her extraordinary talent and versatility as an actress, despite her candid admissions about her personal preferences. Beginning her illustrious career at the tender age of 17, Smith made her mark as Viola in an Oxford Playhouse School production of Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. This early foray into the world of the Bard set the stage for a prolific and distinguished career, during which Smith graced the stages of prestigious theaters, including Laurence Olivier's National Theater in the 1960s and Canada's esteemed Stratford Shakespeare Festival in the 1970s. Her portrayal of iconic Shakespearean characters earned her widespread acclaim and admiration from audiences and critics alike. One notable highlight of Smith's Shakespearean exploits was her portrayal of Desdemona in the 1965 film Adaptation of Othello, directed by and starring Laurence Olivier in the title role. Smith's performance garnered critical acclaim and earned her an Oscar nomination, further solidifying her status as one of the preeminent actresses of her generation. Despite her formidable accomplishments in the realm of Shakespearean theater, Smith has been refreshingly candid about her personal feelings toward the Bard's works. In an interview with The Guardian, she admitted, Shakespeare is not my thing, offering a candid glimpse into her artistic preferences and sensibilities. Smith's candid admission underscores the complexity of artistic taste and the subjective nature of creative expression. 
While she may not profess a deep affinity for Shakespeare's works, her contributions to the world of theater and film, including her memorable performances in Shakespearean roles, attest to her unparalleled skill and dedication as an actress. In essence, Maggie Smith's journey through Shakespearean theater offers a compelling narrative of talent, dedication, and artistic exploration, showcasing her ability to excel in diverse roles while remaining true to her own artistic sensibilities. She hates acting on screen. Maggie Smith's candid reflections on her iconic roles in Harry Potter and Downton Abbey offer a revealing glimpse into her perspective on her own career and the challenges of working in different mediums. For many viewers, Smith's portrayal of Professor Minerva McGonagall in the Harry Potter series and her role as the indomitable Dowager Countess of Grantham in Downton Abbey are synonymous with her brilliance as an actor. However, Smith herself offers a nuanced perspective on these roles, describing them as low-hanging fruit in terms of the depth and complexity they offered her as an actress. Obviously, this may come as a shock to her undying fans, but the roles she performed on screen that made her into a talented genius, she herself sees it as just shallow and lacking depth. In an interview with the Evening Standard, Smith expressed gratitude for her work in both franchises while candidly admitting that she didn't feel fully satisfied with her performances in them. She explained, I'm deeply grateful for the work in Harry Potter and indeed Downton, but it wasn't what you'd call satisfying. I didn't really feel I was acting in those things. This sentiment reflects Smith's unwavering commitment to her craft, as well as her desire for roles that challenge and engage her as an artist, and the fact that she prefers stage acting to on-screen. Interestingly, Smith revealed that she shared this sentiment with her fellow actor Alan Rickman, who portrayed Severus Snape in the Harry Potter films. According to Smith, they would commiserate over their mutual feeling that their work in the series often amounted to little more than a series of reaction shots, lacking the depth and substance they craved as performers. Smith's candid assessment of her work in Harry Potter and Downton Abbey highlights the complexities of artistic fulfillment and the importance of finding roles that resonate on a deeper level. Despite her immense success in both franchises, her true passion lies in the theater, where she feels most at home and fulfilled as an actor. In essence, Maggie Smith's reflections on her iconic roles serve as a reminder of the multifaceted nature of the acting profession and the ongoing quest for artistic fulfillment and creative expression. Her honesty and introspection offer valuable insights into the challenges and rewards of working in the entertainment industry. Her health is a threat. In January 1988, Maggie Smith faced a significant health challenge when she was diagnosed with Graves' disease, a thyroid disorder characterized by an overactive thyroid gland. This diagnosis marked a pivotal moment in Smith's life, requiring her to confront the realities of managing a chronic health condition while maintaining her demanding career in the spotlight. As she struggled to continue to make a name for herself, Graves' disease threatened to halt her career and possibly end her life with a range of symptoms like fatigue, weight loss, rapid heartbeat, and eye problems such as bulging eyes and double vision. For Smith, the diagnosis presented not only physical challenges, but also emotional and psychological ones as she grappled with the uncertainties and disruptions that accompany a chronic illness. Despite the private nature of her diagnosis, Smith's journey with Graves' disease offers insight into her resilience and determination to overcome adversity. Undergoing radiotherapy and optical surgery, she embarked on a path of treatment aimed at managing her symptoms and restoring her health. This medical intervention required considerable courage and strength, reflecting Smith's unwavering commitment to her well-being and professional responsibilities. Smith's decision to manage her Graves disease privately speaks to her preference for maintaining a sense of dignity and autonomy in the face of adversity. By choosing to disclose her diagnosis selectively, if at all, she reclaimed agency over her narrative and demonstrated a steadfast resolve to prioritize her health and privacy above all else. But just when she seemed to be overcoming the ailment, another one struck later in her life. 
In 2001, Smith was reported to have been diagnosed with breast cancer, an ailment that yet again threatened the sanctity of her life and legacy. However, despite being a prominent figure in the entertainment industry, Smith opted to keep her diagnosis and treatment relatively discreet, revealing the details to the public only after some time had passed. This decision to maintain privacy sheds light on her deeply personal approach to navigating fame and adversity, and the fact that she was truly a secretive person. Smith's choice to keep her health challenges private likely reflects her desire to maintain a sense of normalcy and control amidst the intense scrutiny of celebrity life. Breast cancer, a diagnosis that affects millions of women worldwide, can be an emotionally and physically taxing experience, and Smith's decision to shield this aspect of her life from the public eye underscores her commitment to preserving her personal well-being and dignity. Furthermore, by choosing to disclose her battle with breast cancer at a later stage, Smith may have aimed to raise awareness about the disease and the importance of early detection and treatment. Her decision to share her experience publicly, albeit after the fact, could serve as a source of inspiration and solidarity for others facing similar health challenges. Overall, Maggie Smith's handling of her health struggles offers a glimpse into her resilience, strength, and unwavering determination to navigate life's adversities on her own terms, even amidst the glare of the spotlight. It highlights her commitment to prioritizing self-care and maintaining boundaries in an industry often characterized by relentless public scrutiny. Marriage mishaps have made her lonely. Maggie Smith's marital journey, although documented publicly, offers glimpses into the intimate aspects of her personal life, revealing both joys and sorrows intertwined with her relationships. In 1967, Smith entered into matrimony with actor Robert Stevens, a union that bore witness to the arrival of their two sons, actors Chris Larkin and Toby Stevens. Despite the familial bliss, the marriage eventually succumbed to the strains of life, culminating in a divorce in 1975. This period marked a tumultuous chapter in Smith's life, navigating the complexities of parenthood amidst the dissolution of her marriage. However, following the end of her first marriage, Smith found love again and tied the knot with playwright Alan Beverly Cross in 1975. Their union endured for over two decades until Cross's passing in 1998. The companionship and shared experiences they enjoyed during their marriage provided solace and support to Smith amid the ebb and flow of life's challenges. Reflecting on her life's journey, Smith offered a poignant perspective on companionship and solitude in a 2013 interview when she was asked how she felt about her late husband's passing. She stated, it seems a bit pointless going on on one's own and not having someone to share it with. This sentiment encapsulates her innate human desire for connection and partnership and the fact that the lack thereof has made her sad and lonely. But beyond her marriages and personal reflections, Smith's familial landscape has expanded to include five grandchildren, further enriching her life with love and familial bonds. These relationships likely serve as cherished pillars of strength and joy, grounding Smith amidst the ever-changing tides of fame and fortune.